Well, hi there, Dexter. How you doing? You ready for our next project? Are you guys ready for our next project? Welcome to Homeworks. Today, and probably a few days from now, <laughs> we're gonna be redoing our entire fire pit, which you probably can't see because both of our boys are blocking your view. However, you'll see it here in just a few minutes. Right, guys? That's right. Oh, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Okay, I got to jump in here real quick and uh, just explain something. The video that we shot the night that we started the project on the fire pit somehow got corrupt on the SD card. Not sure what happened, but it did. Fire pit started out looking like this. And then as we progressed a little bit, and we had to figure out our depth for our block and our brick. Uh, it got to look like this. So let's get to the next day. It's the morning of day number two for our project fire pit <laughs> and getting all of our flagstone down getting everything else today is going to be an extremely busy day for us so we got started on this project last night kind of late in the afternoon really we got our circle roughed in all the way around then coming up here over to our walkway going over to the deck started to do some of the digging for our ground our circle is done from the center of the fire pit six feet out to the line. And the way that I did that is I put this tube down in the middle with a string and a tent stake. Brought that out and then marked the area with the tent stake and just drew my line all the way around. So I had a nice circle, perfect circle, all the way around the fire pit. It's that easy. So one of the things I kind of struggled with a little bit on this build is, uh, trying to figure out how I was going to attach the block onto the actual fire ring. Now you could mortar them in place, but is it going to hold up with that kind of heat? That's what kind of scared me a little bit. I didn't want them falling out. I wanted them to attach to that as best as possible. So I kind of looked around and found this high heat mortar from DAP. So I think I'm going to try this. It's good to 2000 degrees. I'm going to grind off the rust that's currently on the fire ring and uh, grind the, the block, back of the block just a little bit. Apply this, see what we get. All of our bricks are in place. The high heat mortar has been applied. And uh, next step is to start a fire inside the fire pit at a low burn for about an hour. Then go to about 500 degrees or so for another hour and that will actually set and dry the mortar in place. Okay, so this is the brick we're going to be using for this project as our edging all the way around our fire pit and out to the, the deck. And when you put this brick down, we're going to be laying it this way, and you're going to want about a quarter of an inch to a half inch above on the grass side so that your quarry wash and your field stone is even with the other side. And so this will be laid down, the brick is four inches deep. You gotta accommodate for your sand that's gonna go in here. You usually got about an inch, inch and a half of sand, and our biggest piece of flagstone is two and a half inches thick. So you have to think about that for where your sand is gonna be from the relationship of the ground and how thick that brick is gonna be or the flagstone to come up level with this along with all the quarry wash that has to go in.
Okay, so we've got most of this pattern done up to this point. Everything's leveled in, sand's in. I think I'm going to take a break and have dinner. So it's the morning of day three. As you can see, I got a little bit more done last night. My wife is instant gratification. So she wanted to take a look at what it was going to look like when it was finished with quarry wash. So we just went ahead and quarry washed in those first set of stones. And Bentley's making a star appearance. So today's agenda is pretty much just trying to get all the way around this circle. We may get about a foot or two feet into it. That's pretty much what I think we're going to get to today. day four or five or something like that of the project and uh, we had a little bit of a rainstorm ripping branches off the trees a lot of rain in the last 24 hours and it is a darn good thing we thought ahead and tarped this entire project or it would have been completely destroyed we got some more rain coming in yet this afternoon late evening so uh, I got to get this water out of here now because uh, I'm going to wind up with even more for a swimming pool later. Well, it's the day after the two-day storms. And now the cleanup begins to try to get everything straightened up. I pulled the one big branch off over there that was laying on the clothesline. Just started to rake up in here a little bit so we can get these tarps up and see what damage was done to the work we've already completed. finally gotten some great weather back which uh, we haven't had in a while also known as rain and wind and screw everything up we've already been working on but behind us the other day we were able to dig out everything around the fire pit now we just got to get it all leveled get our blocks in and uh, start laying stone got our bricks all the way around our fire pit they're leveled out where I want them we've got our bricks laid all the way around this part of the fire pit in our star pattern that we're shooting for and those are all leveled and ready now is where we want to add our mortar and we're gonna do it a, a way that my father taught me many many years ago just quick Crete mortar mix and the way that we we're gonna do this is we grab a little spoonful of mortar and then you put the mortar down inside of your cracks, just like this. And you keep doing that all the way around and fill this up so it comes into this area here. Now we're just gonna sprinkle water over it gently and just keep adding just a little bit of water at a time, let it soak in, add a little bit of water and let it soak in. And over time, that will soak through the mortar and then we'll just let her sit she'll harden just like regular mortar locking all those bricks into place until we can finish our pattern and then lay down our quarry wash and now that we have our bricks down and uh, mortared in place it's time to get to leveling everything that you see around the fire pit hi there Dexter and you got stuff in your face young man <laughs> so that's what we're gonna get to now right buddy you gonna help go get the shovel and help me will you Oh, and you're going to help too? Well, you get the wheelbarrow.
So we've gone all the way around the fire pit at this point and have done our leveling down to where we need it to be for the bricks. And when I mean the leveling, that board comes right up next to that brick so that we can have our sand in there. And as we go up, we can level that so that our block that's gonna go in our flagstone will then meet that same grade and do that all the way down. So some of you are probably sitting there watching this saying, hey, wait a minute, he said he was going to level the area, but he never even picked up a level. Correct, because I used the wrong term. <laughs> really, we're setting ourselves a grade across here. We're on just a slight bit of a slant. So we take our board, which you saw me earlier, and I'm taking that up against the blocks and looking at my grade going all the way around the circle so that if it rains, Everything will go this way because that's the, the slight grade that we have in the landscape. So if I made it level, it wouldn't continue down that area. It would just kind of sit and pool. We don't want that in our fire pit. We've got pretty much most of our pattern already figured out. Didn't want to bore you with the details. It took an entire day to get it all laid out. We still have just a few more stones to put in. A little bit of cutting to do as well on a few stones to make them fit the way I want them to. Then becomes the hard work of laying them out. But before you got, or before we did all of this work down here, one of the things we did was pressure wash all of the stones. Because if you don't, when you lay them all out, one of the things you have to do before you take them back out to put your mason sand or your pack sand in is you have to label each one of these stones and mark each one of those stones so that you know exactly how they went out to put them back in the same way. Because if you don't, you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle and you're not gonna really, really appreciate that one at all. So make sure you pressure wash your stones, make sure that you mark everything, take pictures, even draw a map so that you can put them back in the same way once you get your mason sand down and start leveling everything out. Really, really important to do that. Okay, I'm beginning to sound like a broken record during this whole <laughs> project. But again, we've had more rain. The last 24 hours, we've had over four inches of rain on my rain gauge, and that's just ridiculously crazy. However, the sun has come back out. We've pulled the tarps out. Let's get back at it. Normally on a smaller flagstone type project, I would have marked all of the stones, pulled them out, laid down my mason sand, packed it, then pulled all of the stones back in, putting all the marks back together and leveling things out. However, this is one of the most complex patterns I have ever, ever, ever attempted. And to mark all of this, pull it out, and then hope that you got it all back in the same way, it's probably going to be pretty darn impossible. So I'm going to try something a little different on this project. I'm going to be laying each stone. They're already in their pattern. I'm going to pull it, put my mason sand down, pack it, level my stone, and then continue to the next one. We'll see how that works. Well, good morning. <laughs> At least it is here. <laughs> As you can see, the project is still going on. It's a long project. Hey, I've got a full-time job. I can't always do this sort of thing. So I thought I'd bring you up to date with where we're at and uh, how exactly we're pulling this all off. Covered. As you can see behind me, almost all of our work area has been kept covered up. And when we're done each night, where we're working gets covered up with tarps, visqueen, whatever. Because you just, one, you never know what weather's gonna come along. And if you get a big rainstorm, you're gonna be out here at three o'clock in the morning covering this thing up because rain will literally wash this thing away at right now and ruin everything you've done. Keeping dirt, debris, leaves, whirly gigs, seeds, you name it, out of there is the most important thing to do while you're doing all this other work. So cover your work up. Another thing to be sure you're, you're doing is to keep your area clean. One of the things you'll see around your area as you start to work is if you got these little characters running around, whirly gigs, they fall down constantly this time of year. I am constantly picking them out of the work. If you leave these in the ground or anything like this in the ground, 
it's going to come up later and be a real, real big problem. So I want to go over a few things of what you need to do and keep track of when you're doing a project this big. One of the things is to make sure to keep your sand as wet as possible, especially if you unload it and you pile it up around your driveway. Keep it wet. It, it'll dry out, just spray it back down again, but keep it wet. The wetter the sand, I mean, I shouldn't say the wetter, wetter the sand, but the more moist the sand, the easier it is to work with and to compact. Speaking of compaction, one of the things you're really gonna wanna make sure you have is several different tamping devices. Of course, your standard is the tall four or five foot tamper that's got an eight inch by eight inch pad on it. That's almost invaluable on any job you're doing like this. You can also make up your own tools that are smaller, that are made out of steel if you wanna weld them together and use a dead blow hammer on them to tamp smaller areas. Another thing is to keep your area that you're working in constantly moist. So after you've gone through an area like over here and you're coming back around like we're doing here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that when you come back to work on this a day or two later, that you re-moisten all the soil where you're going to be working at. So make sure that you gently sprinkle that down with water and <laughs> make sure it's as, as moist as you can get it. Now you don't want it, it's a, a river of water going over it because then you're just gonna ruin everything that you've already leveled out. You just want it so that the sand stays moist. It's easier to compact. And if you let it dry around where you're actually working, when you go to start tamping down sand around it, that sand that dried out will not hold its shape and anything that you start tamping on will actually move the stones around it. And that's a really, really bad idea. So as you can see, it's no easy task to do this. It is a lot of work. It's, it's multiple levels. It's constantly changing grades, checking, rechecking, taking sand away, putting sand back in over and over and over again, rock after rock. But when you're done, you're gonna really like it. Well, it's nine o'clock at night and this, you can see it, there we go. Just laid the last block and I'm ready for a shower. <laughs> Night. Well, the day is finally here that we get to wrap up the fire pit patio project. Last night, we got through laying the final block in. We also sprayed insecticide all over the blocks and the sand to kill off beetles, ants, whatever is in there. It's gonna kill them off so they're no longer in that area. Today, before we start laying the quarry wash down, we're going to clean up all of the leaves and whirly gigs that fell in overnight. Then we're going to water down all the sand and the stones, not heavy, just lightly, and then start applying our quarry wash. Many of you are probably watching this video trying to figure out what in the heck is this. This is nothing more than a simple tent stake, plastic one. And over the years I've found that this seems to work best for being able to come down inside of these grooves and hammer that down, tamping it into place. Now, the old masters used to have tools for this. I'm not quite that fancy. 
just went and got a tent stake. <laughs> but it works. And it works because as you tamp this, as it packs it to that certain point, you're not going to hit the stone and jar the stone. That's the last thing you want to do is hit one of these stones and jar it out of place. So take your time, do it right. Tamp this down. Now once you're done tamping, which I'm not going to bore you with me going through this entire patio, once this is all tamped down, then we set mortar in place and we apply water. We'll do that next. Well, we are finally done with this load of quarry wash, having it all packed in around the flagstones. And uh, as I've stated before, it is a lot of work. It is hands and knees, hammer, wood tools, tent stakes, whatever you can use to get that packed in tight around those flagstones. Now that that's done, we're gonna get another load of quarry wash, lay it down on top of the stones, brush it in with a broom, water it down, leave it overnight. Then tomorrow, we're gonna get a bag of mortar mix, drop that in, sweep it around with a broom, wet it down, let that slightly dry, because most of it's gonna go down into the small cracks and crevices, wet it down again, and that should lock all of these flagstones in place, and that will be the end of the patio project. So we've got our quarry wash all down, we've watered it, we've let it set overnight, now it's time to brush in the mortar, and it's just nothing more than standard quick creep mortar mix. Things you want to make sure you do first is get everything cleaned up off of your whirly gig, leaves, whatever it is, get it out of your way. Next thing, it's a little windy today, so you want to make sure that you don't have any kids playing outside, dogs running around, or anything else, because we are kind of tossing mortar mix around and we don't want that in the air. We don't want our pets getting into it or our kids. At the moment after laying down our mortar and getting the water all down it may not need another application it looks pretty good so far so we'll check it again tomorrow and if it does we'll put some more on it hope i was able to show you a few tips and pointers during our fire pit patio project this entire project took a little over four weeks from start to finish and we weren't working on it full time either this was definitely one of the most difficult flagstone projects i've ever really done but it was still a blast. We finished up by landscaping the surrounding area around the patio as well. If you have any questions or would like more information on things that we did during the build, leave them down in the comments. I will try my very best to answer each and every one of them. Thank you for tuning into Homeworks, and please remember to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you on my next project.